What's up, Val Penguins? Today we're going to do the chi-square question that's on the 2013 question number one. So again, a reminder that this is the chi-square formula. So we're going to see this on the formula sheet. We've got our chi-square being this little x symbol square um, equals our summation of our observed minus our expected squared over our expected. So they tell us that there's this investigation of our fruit fly behavior in a certain choice chamber, and we're testing the spatial distribution of those flies affected. Um, they then give us information about this little cotton ball and the dry cotton ball, which we're not really going to need for our question. Um, so going down to part C, which is where the math is, the experiment described above is repeated with a ripe banana at one end and an unripe banana at the other end. So what we see is that we've got like a ripe banana here and an unripe banana there, and we're kind of seeing how does the fly uh, respond to that. So once again, the positions of the flies are observed and recorded every minute for 10 minutes. The position of the flies after one minute and 10 minutes are shown in the table. So they give us where the uh, flies are at one as well as 10. And then they're asking us to perform a chi-square test on the data um, and then specify that null hypothesis as well as enter the calculation into a table. So they've already given us a table to do for this one. So first thing, what is our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis is always going to be um, the independent variable has no effect on the dependent variable, okay? Um, and so in terms of this, we're looking at our experiment being that the ripe versus unripe banana um, has no effect. So we should see that there's gonna be an equal distribution of the flies in the end with the ripe banana, the middle, and then the end with the unripe banana. So presence of a banana, ripe or unripe, has no effect on the fruit fly position. Um, now we have to calculate our chi-square value. They gave us this chart, so we're going to use this chart to do it. So based on this, we can see our observed is going to be um, 45, 3, and 12. So we observed them at 10 minutes. And then what we expected them was equal amounts. So we expected there to be, of course, it's equal 60, um, 20 in each section, okay? Because you just took the number of 60 divided by 3. Um, if you were to do this question with a genetics problem, you would use the predicted ratios from your genetics problem. Um, you would use whatever it is that you came up with for your null hypothesis to figure out those expected, okay? Um, and then you would do the 45 minus the 20 squared over the 20, and that's going to be how you get each of these values. So 3 minus 20 squared um, over 20, 12 minus 20 squared over 20, because all we're using is that chi-square formula that we used at the beginning. Um, and that gives us 48.9 when we add those together. So um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to use this kind of like a a chi-square like big long table. So if we use the big long table, um, then we've got the end with the ripe, the middle, the end with the unripe. We have the same values of 45, 3, and 12 in 2020. Um, but now we're going to break it down into each individual component of the actual equation. Um, so 45 minus 20 gives us 25. 3 minus 20 gives us 17. 12 minus 20 gives us negative 8. Then we'll take this value, our observed minus our expected, and we're going to square it. So 25 squared gives us 625, negative 17 squared gives us 289, and negative 8 squared gives us 64. And we take whatever's in this column, divide by our expected column. So 625 divided by 20 gave us 31.25. Yeah, you get a calculator, don't worry. 289 divided by 20 gives us 14.45, and 64 divided by 60 gives us 3.2. Um, and so with this, we now need to figure out what does this say about our chi-square. Um, so first thing we have to do is come up with our degrees of freedom. We've got, sorry, three different groups. We've got the end with the ripe banana, the middle, and the end with the unripe banana. So we're going to do three minus one, which gives us two. So there'll be two degrees of freedom. We then look at our little chi-square table to see what is our critical value. So since we're looking at two degrees of freedom, a p-value of 0 0.05, that means it's going to be 5.99. So we have to say, okay, well, how does the value we calculated compare to that critical value? And so we got 48.9. Our value is larger than the critical value. So that tells us that we're going to reject our null hypothesis. So hope this helped. Remember, 85 penguins just assessed by all.